Hi, my name is Kate Grant, and this is a presentation over my internship this past summer during the life and times of COVID-19. So a little bit about me. I'm a full-time mom to a four-year-old and also a full-time student. So it's busy days and busy nights, but definitely keeps life interesting. In my past life, I was a hairstylist and I knew I didn't want to do this forever. And it was from conversations I had with my previous clients, as well as just my own curiosity, I stumbled into usability. And I find that there are a lot of parallels between the two, especially regarding the focus on client user. You know, just hair isn't one of them, but yeah. I also feel very lucky I've been able to hold on to an internship, especially during this pandemic. I just really hope they give me a job <laughs> when I graduate in December. But as for the internship itself, when I was looking, I was using things like employment SEOs, such as Indeed, LinkedIn, bothering professors, and personal connections. Ultimately, it was the personal connections that landed me my internship. So that being said, my internship is with a company called 360training.com. It is a very small UX team and it's under the marketing department. And I'm pretty sure that most UX teams tend to be. My mentor, Medi, he's super helpful. He's the conversion rate optimization specialist as well as the growth manager. And I was set up with him because I really wanted to focus on the research aspect of usability. As for the company itself, 360 Training, we provide e-training across multiple fields of employment. Our headquarters are in Austin and there are two other offices. One is in Pakistan and the other one's in Philippines. Our three main areas that we focus on training wise is learn to serve. So if you've ever weeded tables in Texas or anywhere else in the country, Agent Campus, which focuses on estate license or just enough hours to get their real estate license. And then OSHA Campus, which is training based on OSHA guidelines for health and safety. Super important, you know. The company also switched leads not that long ago. So there's been a major overhaul to become more research based in every faucet of the company which is super cool for me because user research is something that I am looking to do. Life is the remote intern. So obviously things kind of changed with the pandemic, which meant how my internship was going to take place also changed. And because of that, the first three little graphics that you see is pretty much where my main focus has been this summer. We'll see how that changes in the future. Who knows? So first and foremost, set up and analyze user testing videos. I am the only one that does this. Nobody else knows how to do this. So it's really good I learned how to do this in school. And we also use usertesting.com. So that is a huge plus. It was a huge plus when I went in. Um, yeah, so I'm the one who does that. And then, Aid the conversion rate optimization specialist with uncovering problem areas and formulating test hypothesis. That is a mouthful. So that's basically like just help an Eddie out. So we go through all of the data we have and see where we've got problems, what tests need to be run, you know, just stuff like that. And then summarizing the insights and results. That's pretty self-explanatory. This next one, generating and organizing website design assets and style guides. That one, maybe I've dabbled in a few times, but it's really more so designed based upon the um, usability of the website. There have been times, as you will see in examples later on in the slideshow, where things have gotten launched but haven't been tested yet for usability. And that kind of means that we have to go back and fix things. Working with social media coordination and generating social media graphics. I haven't really done this one so much yet. I think just because of pandemic. So we will see in the future. So tools of the trade. 
for communication, it's Microsoft 365, so Office and Zoom. That's how I talk to Eddie, like, all the time. User research, usertesting.com, Hotjar, which I love. So with Hotjar, you can do um, recordings of people interacting with your product, as well as heat map tools, stuff like that. I haven't gotten to use the heat map yet, just the recording, so it, I love it. It's like you're a professional creep. And then Optimizely for A-B testing and Google Analytics. So Optimizely and Google Analytics, I just skimmed the surface of. Google Analytics, I feel like used to be, that's its own beast. It needs to be its own class. There's so much to that. But the cool thing about it is whatever I find, my findings from user testing in Hotjar, they can be validated with tools like Optimizely and Google Analytics. So that's pretty neat. Reporting. So most, pretty much all the time, my stuff, my reports are Excel spreadsheets. Once in a blue moon, they get put into a PowerPoint for like a CFO, CEO, but rarely ever. And other things we use, Asana, which is like Trello for task assignment stuff. Dropler for uh, sharing GIFs, images, stuff like that. Adobe Creative Cloud, self-explanatory, and Harvest. So Harvest is what I use for my time tracking, and I send my invoice out to the company at the end of the month for how much money they have to give me. So this first project was a cart redesign um, with the lack of completed purchases and the presence of abandoned carts. We were wondering if taking users directly to a cart page or checkout page was affecting conversion basically. So they launched a mini cart. So my contribution to this project was user testing the new design myself before the official launch through a heuristic evaluation. I then created and launched three user testing.com tests for both desktop and mobile to identify more pain points as well, as well as validate my own findings for my heuristic evaluation. And then after tweaked and launched, I reviewed users interacting with the new mini cart via Hotjar for about two weeks and then reported my data and observations. So what I did here is I went ahead and put a little snippet of one of my crazy Excel sheets into a pivot table for y'all. So it's kind of easier to see. Um, and then from here, I can make my own observations and notes on things that I need to be changed for this project. Of course, from the user testing.com site, those results confirmed my heuristic evaluation, which was great. Um, and then after launching, I located a major bug that related to the loss of products in the cart and it was also related to login attempts. We were having some really big issues with that, which therefore was causing user frustration and abandonment. So users also seem to be using the mini cart as a comparison tool for similar products. So therefore what needs to happen now is we need to create and test a comparison widget to alleviate this issue. There needs to be some kind of comparing function. I keep on reiterating this like all the time and it keeps on popping up. Anyway, off my soapbox. So the next project, Agent Campus, this one is still in the works. After a recent platform switch, we were noticing a lag in metrics and we were betting that our issue had to do with content. So the thing is, is they launched this site, as you will see beforehand, and it looks great for the new platform, but they did not properly user test it. So we had to go back and fix it. And questions we were asking that we wanted to know was, are the users even creating the content? Where do they go if they're not enrolling in a course? Where are they struggling? So I made three different user testing dot com tests and each starting at a new landing point. And that way I could focus on the correct content and design. So my findings, we need to whittle down the introduction, 
because users were having a hard time locating important information they needed. And ironically, some of it was located in the previous text. They just weren't reading all of it, and some of it was not. Something interesting I noticed was the split down the middle of either people feeling that there was enough information in different areas of the Agent Campus website, or there wasn't. It was a hard yes, a hard no. There was no maybe in between. And from that, I pretty much gathered that the people who were who were doing the testing were legitimately either real estate agents currently in the field or previously, or they just kind of wanted to take the test, maybe get some money. But at the same time, that's fine because they could just be representing potential future real estate agents, I guess, who are looking for more information. So. So since this is still a work in progress, we are still addressing some other things, but you could see here, like for example, the difference between the two introductions with the bullet points, stuff like that. What's next? It's a good question. So with every question and every test that's conducted leads to new insights, new areas to explore, and the creation of new tests based on the findings so it's a continuous process of evolving with our users to meet their needs, and I really enjoy it. And I hope you guys enjoy this presentation. It wasn't too dull. If you guys have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me. I'll do my best to answer them. You can get in touch with me at my email or my LinkedIn. Thanks for checking this out. Stay safe, y'all.